and welcome to another episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White, and in this episode, we're going to take a look at how photographers can take better advantage of Creative Cloud by using Lightroom to publish photo galleries to their hosting that's included with Creative Cloud. So as a Creative Cloud member, you not only get your 20 gigabytes of storage space in the Adobe Creative Cloud, but you also get hosting with our business catalyst of up to five websites. So you can use that hosting service to host galleries. And I'm gonna show you how you can get those galleries right from Lightroom to your Business Catalyst account. So let's go ahead and dive right in. I'm in Lightroom and I've got a folder of images here, um, or it could be a collection. And this is the collection or folder that I want to use to publish a web gallery from. So I want this to be my fitness gallery. Now, the web module is, has been there since day one of Lightroom, but to, as of today, it still doesn't yet work directly with your Creative Cloud account. So there's one bit of setup we have to do first before Lightroom can talk to your Creative Cloud account. So in order for Lightroom to publish uh, via uh, Secure FTP to Business Catalyst, there has to be an existing site there first. And the site can be a one-page site, it could be just your name, it could be anything, but you have to establish that site first before you can put in your credentials for uh, Lightroom to be able to pub publish galleries to it. So to build that simple site, we're actually going to use Adobe Muse because Muse is part of your Creative Cloud membership and it's very easy to use. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's uh, head over to Adobe Muse, and if you don't have this application installed yet, all you have to do is log in at creative.adobe.com with your Creative Cloud uh, account, and you can go to the Apps tab, click to download Muse, and install it right on your hard drive. Once you're installed, you will launch it. You'll get the same screen I'm looking at here, and you're just going to go ahead and say Create New Site. Now, of course, if you're brand new to Muse, brand new to creating a web page, you know, probably a lot of this doesn't make sense yet to know what to change. But the beauty of this is, these are good defaults. So we'll just go ahead and click OK, and that will present us with the planning stage for our website. And it even gave us our initial home page, which is what we're going to build. Um, we can continue to add more pages. We could actually make this your entire photography website. But just for the purpose of today, using Lightroom, we just need to establish at least one page. Now, the bottom here is the master page. Think of that as your template or your background to your entire site, what you want to be consistent across your site. So I'm gonna double click on the master. Here, let me zoom out a little bit so you can see the whole thing. And really, there's the browser fill and the page. And the browser fill is kind of the gray I want already. I want the page, though, to be a different color. I don't want it to be white. I don't want that to be the background of my site. I'm gonna start with gray. And actually, I can just dial it down, make it darker, keep dialing it down until I get it as dark as I want. Okay, the only other thing I want to put on the master is my logo. So we'll go to File, Place. I've got a logo here uh, that's a ping file. And that means it supports transparency. And we'll just go ahead and place that. We can go ahead and size it down. It's a little too large. And of course, I don't want it to have... Um, I don't want it to be that large, so we'll just go ahead and size it down. The only other thing I would put here is maybe the text that says Terry White Photography or it's my photography site. So we'll grab our text tool. Uh, we'll just drag out a frame here. And we can go ahead and say that this is Terry White Photography. And we'll select that text. Uh, we'll give it a color. I'm just going to make it red so it stands out better. And we'll next um, maybe even give that a little bit darker color. There we go, a little bit darker burgundy color. There we go. And we'll make that larger. And maybe not that large. How about 18? There we go. And we can now put that, pick that up and put that anywhere we want. Okay, maybe up here. Great. Now the only other thing you might want to do is change the font for that. And actually I do want that color. Just being picky here to be a little lighter so it's easier to read against the dark gray. And the only other thing you might do is pick a font. Now you have, in, on the web, you have 11 web safe fonts that work across all platforms, all browsers. That's why they're called web safe. 
you may be tempted to use your fonts. And while you can use any font you want, I advise you to only use your fonts very sparingly, like once in a blue moon, because it's going to export those fonts as images, which will make your site take longer to load. Not a great idea. But you could also go to the web fonts. The web fonts are the 400 plus type kit fonts that we include with uh, your use of Muse. And you can go search for them by the different styles of fonts. Um, you can search for them by name. And once you find a font that you want to use, uh, here, let's see, I think it would look okay in Creon. It will add that font and then make it available for you to use. It will do regular. And now that becomes your font um, of choice for that particular text. And you can use that font throughout the site. And that font is hosted in the cloud or hosted in the web so that uh, anyone will be able to see your site, will be able to see that font as text and even highlight it. Now, if I did want to use uh, my real font for that Terry White Photography, let's see if I have it installed here. I do uh, typically use Trojan uh, Pro. I can use Trojan Pro, but keeping in mind that it's going to turn this into an image on my site. And therefore, since it's on the master, it's going to be an image on every page. Luckily, it's smart about loading images. It'll only have to load that once per visitor but um, only use your fonts sparingly. Okay, so we got our master built. Let's close the master. Now let's go to the home page. And on the home page, we're gonna go to the widget library. And the only thing we're gonna do here is, since this is the front page of the site, if anyone does go directly to this URL, I do want them to be able to see something other than just my name and logo. So I'm actually gonna give them a slideshow to look at. So we have slideshows in the widget library. I'm gonna grab a blank one and just drag it on. And once I put that blank slideshow there, it um, prompts me with the options to configure it. That's a fairly new feature in Muse where it pops up the options right away instead of you having to look for them. But there's one thing I wanna do before I adjust those options and that is adjust the size of the show itself. So I'm gonna just make this a little wider. Here actually it's giving me the width there, I'm going to make it right around 640. Great. And then to get back to those options, I just click the little blue arrow in the upper right corner. Now I can turn off the things I don't want. I don't want the captions. I don't want a counter. I don't even want the previous and next buttons because this is just going to be a self-running slideshow. Now I'll add my images. I exported some JPEGs out of uh, Lightroom. Here they are, all 13 of them. It load them, loaded them in and my slideshow, my page, my site is ready to go. I can preview it right here in Muse by clicking the preview button. That will load it. I want to make sure my slideshow actually works and it does. And I can, again, this is great. I can keep building a website. I can put, you know, text here with my phone number, email, all that. My rates, whatever you want. You can add more pages. But for the purpose of this video, we're just using this site to establish our website with Business Catalyst so that we can upload from Lightroom. So I'm going to close the home page. And now we're going to go ahead and click Save Site. So we'll always be able to get back and make changes to this. So we're going to save it uh, to a folder on your hard drive. And we're just going to call this TWP and for Terry White Photography. Okay, great. You can call yours whatever you want. And now that I've saved it, the only other thing we have to do is publish it. And this is built into Muse to go directly to your Creative Cloud account. So when I publish it, if you haven't signed in, it would have prompted you to sign in with your Adobe ID. Since I'm already signed in, it's saying, what do you want your site name to be? So I'm just gonna abbreviate it TWP for short it will immediately check to see if that's been taken, and it has. So instead of TWP, it's, it's, um, it's suggesting TWP zero, and I don't want that. So I'm just gonna go TW photo, and TW photo has not been taken, so I'm gonna be the first one to grab that. So let's click okay. It is now 
creating your Adobe Business Catalyst temporary site. It will upload um, everything that makes the site, basically the uh, slideshow, the text, the logo, the HTML, the CSS, the JavaScript, and everything else needed to make this site work. And then it will show you your site on the web. Your site is there, ready to go. You've done it. TWphoto, business businesscatalyst.com is the URL. You can go check it out now. But let's head back to Muse for a moment because I can now go in and click Manage. So when I click Manage, that will log me in to my admin console for my sites, where this is where you will get statistics of all your site viewers and all that. But the only reason I really came here is because that's a temporary site. I want to actually push the site live. So th what that means is I'm ready for people to come to this site and for it to really be out on the web. So when I push the site live, I'm going to say, yes, push the site live. It's telling me as my Creative Cloud membership, I have the ability to have five live sites. I've already got one. So this is going to take up slot number two. And it'll take a few moments to do that. And now my site is the real deal. It is, uh, I can add a domain name so I don't have to use TWP or TW photo. But at this point, we're just going to say done. Okay, that was the initial setup. Just build your one page, get it out there in Business Catalyst. Um, you can always come back to Business Catalyst and manage it, but that's it. Let's come back to Lightroom now. So now that we've established this website, we're ready to upload galleries from Lightroom. So I'm in my uh, folder of images. We're going to go to the web panel here and in the, uh, or the web uh, module here. And in the web module, you've got all these great uh, Lightroom templates that you've known to grow and love. You've got some additional um, galleries here, like the Airtight Auto Player and Lightroom Flash Gallery and so forth and on, so on. I'm going to keep it very simple. I'm just going to do a Lightroom UI that's HTML, so it works on mobile devices as well. Now, the next thing is just basically going through this panel and changing your settings. So the site title is going to be uh, TWP for Terry White Photography. It's going to be the Fitness Gallery. Okay, and I can use leave this Lightroom attribution if I want, but I'm just going to say um, uh, a sample of my fitness shoots. Okay, contact name, Terry White, because that appears at the bottom there, uh, the bottom of the gallery. I'll show you there. That's where that is. And if you want users to be able to email you, you can put in a mail link. So, for example, if I put in Terry at mail.com, which that's not my real ID, so don't mail me there. Um, that will allow people to click to email you from, from your site. You can also use your identity plate. Um, that will make it more branded for you. So I can take out that site title if I want and just use my identity plate. Um, great. And let's go ahead and move on. This is where you can figure more about the gallery itself. Do you want to show the cell numbers? Do you want borders? Do you want uh, how many pages do you want? Uh, do you want the labels, the captions, so forth and so on? Watermarking. Right now, it's just going to do a simple copyright Terry White, but I would prefer to use one of my um, custom watermarks where it will use my logo. And now we get down to the end. This is where we actually configure the secure FTP to go right to Business Catalyst. So whatever it's on right now, I'm going to go to custom settings and I'm just going to say edit. So when I say edit, this is where you go set it up. And this is the magic here that gets it connected to your Business Catalyst account. So the first thing is the protocol is not FTP. It's secure FTP. So Lightroom, the later versions of Lightroom support secure FTP. The server is going to be your Business Catalyst site. So it was TW Photo dot business catalyst dot com and your username this is the tricky part your username is that exact same thing 
copy, paste, slash your Adobe ID. So this is where you type in your Adobe email address that you've signed into Creative Cloud with. Okay, then the password will be the password from your Creative Cloud account. And you can even choose to store that password in your preset if you make this a preset, which I recommend. So I'm going to go ahead and say, uh, save this, save these current settings as a VC or business catalyst preset. I'm going to click create and we'll click OK. Now, the only other thing I have to do is to tell it what subfolder in that account to put this gallery in. So this is where you would say something like fitness. Keep it short, no spaces, no punctuation, no funky characters, because it has to work in a web browser. So one word, two words with an underscore, whatever it takes, but nothing with you know, weird characters. So now we'll just go ahead and click upload. And when I click upload, you may get this warning. Lightroom does not recognize the server host key. Do you still want to access it? Yes, except the key. And by the way, if you got that, that means you've typed in the information correctly. And it is now uh, checking my FTP connection settings up here. And in a few moments, it should begin the upload and there it goes. So that is how you would tie your uh, business catalyst slash creative cloud hosting with Lightroom. Now, once this gallery is done uploading, it will take, actually, I don't think it takes us to it, but we'll go see how it uh, loads in uh, the web browser in just a moment here. Okay, looks like it's completed the upload, and now we can go check it out. So let's head back to the web browser, and in the web browser, we left off on the site, twphoto.businesscatalyst.com, we change it to fitness with a forward slash at the end. The forward slash at the end is important, otherwise it will not work. It needs to see that slash. But that is your URL for your new Lightroom gallery that you just made. That's how it works. So you can now go make other galleries because you've already built the site. So that part's done. You can make as many more galleries as you want, just giving them different names. And that's how you can go from Lightroom to Creative Cloud. So all I would have to do now if I wanted to send someone to this gallery is highlight that URL, copy it, paste it in an email and say, hey, go check out my fitness gallery um, that I just published. And if they mistakenly went to uh, just my site alone, at least they would have a site to look at. So that's why it's important. Like I said, you could just put up that one page with, you know, just a picture on it or text on it. But if they accidentally go here, you want them to actually be able to see something that is related to you. So it might help to build this out a little bit more maybe add some more pages, put some text in, so forth and so on. So that's it for this update or this episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. Hope you got a benefit out of it. And now that you're a photographer with a Creative Cloud account, you can actually take advantage of that web hosting with publishing Lightroom galleries and building websites with Adobe Muse and going to your uh, Business Catalyst hosting. Thanks again for watching. We'll catch you next time.